Hi, welcome to my channel. Today, talking a little bit more about Ask Canada's Given and how it's been hugely successful for a client. And I'm going to call her Lisa. That isn't her name, but um, she did give me permission to use her name, but I, I don't know why I feel so uncomfortable doing that, giving people's names on YouTube. So I'm going to call her Lisa. <laughs> and it's a story about how she used Ask Canada's Given in a slightly different way because it wasn't working for her in the standard way. Lots of things were working for her. She was asking for se several things she'd asked for and got, including a promotion with a really decent pay rise. But she, so she'd been doing this before um, she'd even seen any of my videos on asking it as given. She just liked the idea of it. So she'd been doing it for a while. Then she saw my stuff. Uh, and then we spoke recently because here was the issue. So she would meet a guy and everything would be going really, really well, as in so well. The guy would be super keen. She would be keen. And, but often she'd think they're a little bit keener. And then it would just crash and burn no apparent reason half the time they might ghost her she's not been blocked but she's been ghosted um some one guy went back with his ex uh, one guy just wasn't interested anymore really randomly uh, it was just one thing after another and she just goes I, I don't understand it and i'm i've asked for so many other things that i've got why can't i get a committed relationship why is this not happening so Basically, we went through everything and I was going, asking her about her childhood, asking her about um, beliefs and stuff that she might have. And I didn't find anything that would be a red flag to me. And I said, OK, there's nothing there that immediately makes me think, oh, that's what it is. I said, but there is something there. There's for sure going to be something there because it's a pattern. Any patterns in life, there's a reason for it that keeps showing over and over and over and you don't think you're you're doing anything to make these things happen, then there's something on a subconscious level. So all I can do at that point is go, you need to go away, take some time to yourself and ask your subconscious this question. Please show me what the issue is. Please show me why these relationships keep crashing and burning, whatever. I'm not sure exactly what term she used. And so that's exactly what she did. And then three days later, and the same thing happened to her as happens to me most of the time with this, well, I want to uncover something is she was driving to work and she was hit with it all of a sudden. Two things, actually. The first thing, which I think is the most significant, is too good to be true. So she said, she went, oh my God, like every relationship that was starting and going in her favour and, and being really great and everything, she said she'd have a fleeting feeling and she didn't even put the words to it, but it was like, is this too good to be true? Okay, she'd ask herself the question, is it too good to be true? But she wouldn't really ask herself the question. She said it was just like an energetic thing. But looking at it now, I can see exactly what it was. So also then she said it, another thing came up that she'd never even thought about much or at all since it had happened. So when she was at primary school, she was watching something. It was some cartoon thing. I can't, I'm not sure what it was, just to say the little mermaid or something. <laughs> but she said to her mum, oh, she's got everything. And her mum had said... No, Lisa, nobody's got everything. It's impossible to have everything. You can't have everything. And she said that had come up and she just said, I don't know where, I, I'm shocked that was even still in there. I said, everything is in there. Your subconscious stores everything. It's all there. You just ask for it and it was uncovered. And that, so, so that, you can't have everything. Okay, so everything else is going really well for her in her life, but not the love life thing. So you can't have everything. But for me, arguably, the most important thing was this, it's too good to be true. Because that is you saying to your subconscious, this isn't true, this isn't real, this is too good to be true, because it's, it, it will take it as a fact. And so she would say, I remember having, I would have that feeling, and she said, and it would be like a week or two weeks later when something would happen, either they'd stop speaking to me, so I'd be ghosted, or they, you know, the one that went back to his ex, something would happen, it would be really shortly after that. She said, but I didn't even really notice that I was doing that as such until it's been shown to me now. She said, now it seems so obvious. And she said, is that it? I'm like, well, you asked for your subconscious and this is what it's shown you. So yes, it's it. You know, I'm not the one to say it is it or it's not it. But if your subconscious has brought that up for you, then that is it. You've got, you've got to trust it. You've got to trust that it knows what it's on about. So basically, she said, I just don't feel it anymore. Now I know it, it seems so ludicrous that I, I's laughable. She said, I, I just feel relief. But that's what it is, she said, because that's something so minor. I said, yeah, it is. It really is, because those sayings that our parents used to say to us, they don't mean anything. Um, it, it's just, you know, and, and parents... They're, they're just trying to make you feel better, aren't they? Well, you can't have everything. No one's got everything because they don't want you to be disappointed in life. But actually, look, that's just like a little spell. It dropped in there. 
went into your subconscious, did its work over and over and over and over and over. And she said, looking back, actually, she had a couple of friendships back in the day where the same sort of thing happened. So she's saying like, it, it's kind of put, put on to relationships, that kind of thing. But she said, I just don't feel it anymore. So I said, well, okay, so this guy now, so the guy was doing what the other guys have done. And she's like, I can feel him pulling away. Like, and he hadn't texted her for like five days. And she said, I'm just going to write this one off because um, now I know what it is. Like the next one is going to be better. And I was thinking, you don't need to write that off. But, you know, I, I, for me, I quite like it when somebody says that because I think they're going to have no resistance there now because they're letting go of that person. They're letting go of the need for this to work out. So it's probably going to work out. But I wasn't going to say that and put more pressure on it because she just had this huge relief wave of relief and she was feeling so much better so I thought do you know what if this one doesn't work out then the next one will so she said I might just have a little go at um, getting a bit of commitment from him getting something to change but with no expectation but before she could even get the chance to do that he just started texting her again he's just got keen again so basically this was about three and a half weeks ago it's been absolutely fine since so she said it's like that bit in the middle didn't happen she said it's almost like I revised it because it I, it seems like it didn't happen. She said it almost feels like that distance didn't happen and he's carrying on as normal. He doesn't seem to think that he'd pulled away or anything like that. So this is why to me asking it is given is the most magical thing ever because you can just dig down deep. You know, if something's not happening, you can ask why. If you find out why, you can ask for the solution. Sometimes with, with Lisa, the solution just came immediately because it was like, that's a load of nonsense. But because she didn't know it was there, she hadn't told her subconscious it was a load of nonsense. So it was just working with it over and over and over. It was on autopilot. And those programs are the ones that hold us back because we don't know they're there. You imagine that, if you don't know that's there, that would have gone on and on and on doing exactly the same and she would have never known why she couldn't sustain a relationship. If your subconscious brings something up to you, then that is it. You don't need to question it because with her, like she said, she would have never ever worked that out because she said though you can't have everything, just hadn't even ever occurred to her probably after that point at all but but it goes in there like a little spell you can't have everything you've got this great job you've got this pay rise you've got this lovely car you've got these lovely friends lovely family where well, you can't have a good relationship as well because that would be too much and no one gets to have everything do you know what i mean so i think it was a combination of both but i think the speed in which these things ended was down to the too good to be true because she'd have the feeling and i know how powerful those split second feelings are and then it would happen really shortly after that so basically let's just take advantage of the fact that we can ask for anything so if the surface level stuff isn't showing to you go deeper find out why find out what's going on when you find out what's going on ask for the solution the best suggestion i can give to you with this if you want to make your life easier and it certainly does that is to is ask for just things all day long ask for little things ask for bigger things just keep asking keep asking then look at your success rate over the week, look back and go, what was my success rate this week? What has happened this week that I asked for? It might be a conversation with somebody that you want. It might be a car journey. It might be a holiday um, turning out perfectly. It might be an appointment going well. It might be a meeting going well. Um, whatever it is, but ask for the smaller things, the very small things, the real basic things that help us through life and the bigger things. Just keep asking, get to the end of the week, look at what you manifested from it, look what happened and what didn't happen. And the things that didn't happen go, okay, do I feel any resistance there? Well, I'll just leave that alone then because it is probably gonna happen at some point. If you look at something and you think, oh, I don't think that's gonna happen, you can feel some resistance, then go, that's something I need to go deeper with. Why do I have resistance there? Subconscious, can you help me dissolve this resistance? Or can you help give me the solution to this resistance? think about the wording that works best for you so it isn't what I say it's what you say because it's what works for you especially if English isn't your native language then you might say things in a different way so just say what works for you but to me this ha like all of the all of the things that I've done over time have changed my life to a degree but this to the point where it's so much more relaxing to do it like this because I'm just asking and I'm not asking anything outside of me I'm asking that part of me that makes things happen all the time anyway, but I'm just giving it a definite instruction. I'm saying, look, can you do this? Here's some real clarity. Now you can't get this wrong. 
But again, it, it's one of those things that I think you kind of need to incorporate into your life and make it your way of doing things. And maybe it's not for you. Maybe you love affirmations and you feel like you need to do more. Because if you're the sort of person that kind of does a very, very little like that and then feels like I haven't done enough, I haven't done enough, so you stress out about not doing enough, then this probably isn't your way. But if like me, doing too much causes resistance and makes you notice that you don't have it, that was my problem. The more I did, the more I noticed I didn't have and I couldn't feel relaxed about it because I didn't like that. I could tell, and it was very subtle, but I could tell my vibration on the subject had been altered because of the amount I was trying. So this works for me. So can't do any harm, can it? It can't do any harm. So give it a go and maybe go, I'm gonna do this for a month. I'm gonna ask for all these things over the month and just have a look at my success rate, see what I might tweak differently, see what I could do, ask differently, see if I need to go deeper with things, do it as a bit of a project. Because like I said, if I can get to 100% belief that everything I ask for is gonna show up, that would be happy days for me. Because not because you need to, because you don't. And I've like, the stuff that's come to me, I don't believe any of, I didn't think, oh, that's definitely gonna come now. So it doesn't make any difference. But I'm just really curious to know what that feeling is like. You know where some people do, they just know, like Neville knew, for example, didn't he? And I, I've seen a couple of YouTubers that have been at this longer than me that, that say that they really just know 100% that it's gonna happen. And I would just really like to experience that feeling, to have that feeling within me, because that would be awesome. And I'm just curious to know what it's like, I guess. But you don't need it, don't need it at all. If I needed belief, then half of my life wouldn't be happening right now. So you do not need it, but it is just, it, yeah, it's curi curiosity thing for me. I just, I want to see what it feels like. Anyway, if you don't know anything about me, I'm an author, I'm a manifesting coach, and I'm a mindset coach.